This is In Bootcamp, episode 21, Prime Digital, on Saturday, June 8th, 2019, with your hosts Matthew Petchel and Ryan Rampersad. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash IB21. Hey. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. How about you? Doing quite well, but what a hot week we had. Yeah, I've been traveling this week, and uh, where I was uh, was also quite warm. I was there about a month ago, and the grass was super green, all the trees were blooming, and it was just really nice out. Um, I was back this week, and everything is so dry and dusty and kind of deadish. Mm, that's no good. No, it's no good at all. So this week was pretty much all React. All React, huh? Yep, all React. 24-7, 365. Or literally for just three, three hours each day twice okay that's good i'm glad we got that cleared up so tell me what you've been doing in react for this week well we've been learning more terminology and vocab and basically redoing everything so remember how i was telling you about how we started having to do like class name and everything else when we start stylizing stuff um Mm -hmm. and we haven't really gone away from that um we're still doing almost all our styling in jsx and basically our, in our public folder when we have our index.html stuff it literally is just our bootstrap link and that's about it um, it's just everything is done in react line now yeah and um, that sounds right well earlier in the boot camp we were using axios to go to the um imbd open version dev movie database and making little api calls um we're doing everything we've done before, just again, in React as components and stuff. Yep. One and how, of our do you, first, how do you feel about that? I feel like it's really come first circle, because one of our very first jQuery exercises was make a click counter. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, well, we made a click counter, and every time you change the state, it went boop, 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 and went up and down and everything else. And it all happens in real time, and it's just... We're doing the same thing, except for now there's a whole lot more to it, instead of just, you know making a little button and making a little click handler and stuff. It's, I mean, it's all the same. It just, now it's all componentized. So, so can, can you, can you describe the difference between jQuery and React for that click counter example? Yeah. So basically we just made another component and then, um, in there we, you know, we started with the state, made a new state called count, set that to zero, and then we had a little handle increment arrow function that would just use the this dot set state method, um, and then we use um, count equals this state dot count, and then plus one. So there's more to it. You can't just like do i plus plus or whatever your counter thing was. Um, so there's a lot more to it that way, but I guess it's illustrating how on state change you can have all your other components look for it and then update in real time and that way you're not actually handling anything like just on change it just that triggers the event yep um, which i think there's also a lot of benefit uh with uh, react code because it gives you sort of a mental framework to sort of even if you've never seen the code before it gives you a way to think about what the code should probably look like if somebody asks you to think about a increment decrement widget in react you could guess what that code roughly looks like in your head yeah if somebody asks you to do the same thing in jquery there's a dozen different ways that that would probably look i could see that really easily so it's uh it's nice to have kind of a frame of reference and react gives you that oh but um and we just would do little exercises we'd get a lot of files and we just have to write a little bit more um and then we just talked about just basically every th- in four or five days, we've gone over everything we've gone over in CSS and jQuery and everything else just over again, light at lightning speed, but in the modern React way, which you say yeah. is still old in React. Land. Yeah, yeah, you you are using the old one apparently because you're using the class version. Uh, Hooks is the new version. It's not bad to learn the old version first. In fact, it's probably beneficial because many old code bases in the world will still be lagging behind on that. Uh, it is kind of a shame, though, that they aren't uh, almost certainly going to cover hooks whatsoever. Well, with the four weeks we have left of class, I don't think they will. No, I don't think so either. Uh, I also think... Uh, can we talk about um, like 
you see, you mentioned redoing everything you've done already, but but at lightning speed, can we talk about that a little bit more? I feel left in the dust with some of the stuff we've done. Um, like we barely cover some things, um, and then it's just we've been moving on. And um, so you know, dot map and how it returns a new array and does all the other things, like all these, yeah. like literally, like oh, by the way, guys, there's this new thing. Dot map figured out. Boom, and then you're supposed to use it for the exercise. You're given ten minutes to do an exercise um, that just went over every um, thing. Uh, just went over an array and found all of the things that matched and blah. And as a class, have you used dot map before? No, 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 no. Yeah, see that that that's really bad and that's that's pretty shameful. In fact, when I when I recently taught my JavaScript section for work, I introduced dot map and reduce and filter entirely decoupled from React because while it is a crucial concept for React code, it is not in any way related to react it's simply just good standard programming practice at this point and it, it's kind of a bummer that you don't get to have sort of a more formal introduction to such a useful concept yeah. oh, but yeah. but before we even go on i think like remember that jewel game that you made a long time ago yeah i remember that so i think that's a good example of uh a, a thing you made in jQuery that you could rebuild in React with probably half of half the lines of code and twice the code quality in the same amount of time. You know, I was showing you some of my React code and that reminded when I showed you my jQuery little jewel thing, like you said that you hated my uh value equals whatever yeah, that it was. was an ex- that was an exploit with yeah. a capital E. <laughs> yeah. So in one of my render functions, I showed you that I literally had these input tags that just had value equals this dot state dot username and this dot state dot password. And yeah, so in that particular situation, you were using the name from the DOM and the value from the DOM to use set state for name and value. So like, um, like object tag name colon value and. I I said nope, that's bad. Don't do that. But it works. If it, it works, works, it's right, but it, right? But it's but it but it's 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 um you're relying on the DOM to tell you what the name is. So now you've got to have it in two places versus in just one place. Nice. And I I did tell you that when I saw you next time with the computer, I would show you the better method for handling that. Um, but I think what I want what I wanted just to point out again is that. Because you're going so fast in the class, and learning React is wonderful. Everybody should use React. But if you're if you're not actually spending the time to recode things that you've previously coded, I think that's a wasted opportunity, and I think that's um, a pretty big omission from the class structure. I have the next couple days off, and so I have plenty of time. Because I already have all my own files. Like, I have my own GitHub repository of everything we've done. I have it almost all set to private, but I have... On any computer in the world, I can go find what I've already done and switch it into React Land stuff. Right. So what I would suggest is recode that uh, Jewel game into more of a React application. You know, just just start up a create React app and just start coding whatever you need to do. It doesn't have to look any better than it did. It just has to be in React. And I think you'll learn a lot having to recode something you've coded before. Yeah. No, I'm. I can do, definitely do that because. Nowadays, I bet I could do that in an hour. Like the yeah, I bet you could. Because it took me forever to make it the first time. Yeah, and and one of the reasons that I often tell people about the war game is that it's wonderful for me to learn a new programming language with the war game because I've coded it before many times in multiple different languages. So I already know what the business logic should be. I've already made all of the decisions for how it should work and how it's been implemented. What I'm learning each time I do it again is how a new language works. And recoding something that you've recoded before previously, it lets you sort of move away from those concerns about how it should work, and it lets you focus on how the language or library that you're using should work with that purpose. How many different languages have you done the war game in now? I think about five-ish. Oh, that's more than I figured. Yeah. Not all of them are good implementations, though. <laughs> oh, but I suppose if it compiles and runs, you did it right. Yeah, the Scala one was in- incomplete because I couldn't understand the actor model. But yeah. that is a discussion for another day. Yeah. And one other thing. So you know how uh, we used Express to serve different routes and everything else? 
Yes. Um, you basically said that you didn't like how we were doing that in React land because we used um, React router and then we did route exact path equals slash and then component home. And he thought that was a little bit weird. So what I didn't like there was that it was a single repository of code and there was an express app serving the compiled React app from the same repo, the same express server that the API was using. And then the React app was supposed to be using the proxy. And I don't think any of this is good design. It's actually all bad design. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. High quality code. High quality. Good examples. Yeah. So, and that was basically all we did this week. It wasn't too... Like, you know how we're always moving on to different subjects? We talked about it last week, and we'll be talking about React the rest of this week, too. So, do you have any React homework to do? Yes, and I don't know what it is quite yet. Okay. Um. So, having two days off, so we actually started week 20 t- today. Like, our schedule, it, it really can was week to week before, and now that we've taken so many days off because of holidays and other things, everything's just a little bit screwy. Um, so mm-hmm. I will have React homework real soon. Cool. Yeah, I think it'd be interesting to see what that React homework is. You know, maybe they'll surprise me and have you go back and recode some stuff, but uh, I doubt they it. probably won't. It, it, it won't. Yeah. So, um... One of these days, um, on Tuesday, we had a chance to stay after class and learn how to do destructuring for getting state and stuff. So instead of, like, get state, do this, like, it would be, like, const. Um, so const name, comma, value equals event.target. And then this dot set state would be, like, name in an array bra- in brackets and then colon value. Like, he was just showing us that there's other ways to get the state and stuff and how you can make it all in one line and look so cool using destructuring. Yep, destructuring is fantastic, and it's uh, really important in the hooks version of React, so yeah. it's good that you stayed after to learn that. But uh, after I stayed after, I started going towards my van at the end of class, and I started walking with the TA, and normally the TAs stay a half hour after class for office hours, and because I stayed a half hour, we all got to leave for the first time together, and just got to talking with him, and... You know, the TAs have been there since day one, but I've never really chatted with them. So I had a little conversation with one of the TAs, and it was a lot of fun. Um, So about a year ago, he graduated from his boot camp um, at Prime Digital. Prime Digital, huh? Yep, and he's been working in the coding world for less than a year, and he's just so knowledgeable. And just to think that two years ago, he was, you know, a forestry guy that was chasing prairie chickens. Um, Well, yeah, he... He did a really big career shift or career pathways change. Um, No, he would work for the DNR, putting little collars on prairie chickens and tagging them and seeing how they move and everything else, um, which is a really cool thing. But now he's got a real career and everything else. And it's just it was very inspirational. Listen to his, you know, yeah, I got tired of that. Signed up for Prime Digital Academy. And it was five months of, you know, 830 to five o'clock each day. And. It's very different than what we have. I mean, we're... It sounds we're, a lot more rigorous. Yes, because we're doing 10 hours a week in class, and he, you know, he's doing 40... I'm sure there's breaks and stuff, so it had, yeah. probably end so up it's 40, 40 hours, roughly. Yeah. Um, so he just completely different, and he said he really liked it, and he said that he don't know... He doesn't know how he would handle if he had a part-time boot camp like this, and he just liked to be in a TA because it was extra money and you get to stay in the field because he's still new to the world and he's i mean he didn't know about destructuring like that so he when he stayed after he was asking a question too that's cool i i will uh, i did the math by the way so uh for a 24 week boot camp at 10 hours a week that's 240 hours as you can probably guess mm-hmm. uh for a 40 hour a week boot camp at 20 weeks five months uh, that is 800 hours. However, we, we, we looked at the Prime Digital uh, curriculum before the show, and it, it it isn't as 40 hours a week-ish as it seems, because the first, I don't know, six weeks or so, you're um, solo and it's online-based. And then the last five weeks, six weeks or so, it's group project time or single solo project time. So it's probably more like 500 hours full-time. Still twice what the boot camp is. Exactly. 
But no, you know, it's just because you, you um, mock our curriculum sometimes and you say, oh, this is stupid. Oh, this is stupid. I can't believe you're doing that. And yeah, well, he kind of pretty much said the same things. Um, and it's just funny because, I mean, you hire people from different spots. You do technical interviews with people from all different paths and stuff. And you can tell what kind of boot camp they went to or what kind of, you know, did they go to? Do you have a bachelor's in computer science? What did they do? Yep. And yeah. And and so one of the things that I've been thinking more about lately, because I do those technical interviews with a variety of people for a variety of businesses for a variety of positions, a lot of variety there. I think about more in terms of exposure and experience than in terms of where you came from. A person can go through undergrad and just never code. Somehow they can just coast on by. And if you've never coded, you just won't be able to answer some questions correctly or at all. Uh, whereas somebody from a boot camp surely might have coded, um, you know, a few toy apps, but have never actually coded it of any meaningful complexity. And so they might just not be able to answer the same certain class of questions. Whereas others who have actually taken the time to practice their coding and have just, it, it might even just, and it's horrible to say, it might even just correlate roughly to hours spent in front of a computer coding different stuff over months. It just correlates to coding time, raw coding time. Now, I think that is true up to a certain threshold. Uh, you don't you don't progress from a junior engineer to a intermediate engineer just by coding. There are certain things that you should do to do that. But to get into the industry, there is a certain level of practice that you should have accomplished. And I think that some boot camps, especially especially it seems like these part time boot camps where there's a lot of in between time, I think it might be a challenge to get all that practice time in. Yeah. And so now that I have just a little bit left of this boot camp, I really feel like I need to be doing this because I am struggling right now. Um, when we give are given 10 minutes to do the little exercise and stuff, I have a hard time running Create React app and getting it all going in its own little thing. So the instructions tell us to copy your source file or copy the start of source into the next one and just keep on doing that. But you know what that does? That if you don't have another folder in there, you just erase what you just worked on and you can't look back. Um, yeah, and it's you just never do that. The time we get to do these exercises isn't enough to actually do anything with them. Yeah, and, and we talked a little bit about this before too. Some of the exercises that you're doing now because you're kind of intermingling different technologies, so like React and Express, or Express and Mongo, or, you know, whatever it might be, because you're using more than one tool, they're not isolated examples and exercises, and for every additional piece of technical complexity that you add to something, it just takes longer. That's just the nature of things. Yeah. So you can't always achieve it in about 10 minutes, or 15 minutes, or 20 minutes. Sometimes it could take a couple hours to really get it to work the way you would want it to, We've had the same homework now for three times in a row um, where we had to make a portfolio. Um, one of the second homeworks we did was make a portfolio with just, hey, this is you and this is just hi about me. And like it, it was kind of like a meet. I guess the professor and TAs wanted to see like what your hobbies were because like, it was like things you like to do, who you are, where you came from and stuff. And then it's kind of evolved as we learned more. Um, from mm -hmm. just being a static site to one that was res mobile responsive to one that just had more pizzazz to it. And this was, I got three grades on this. Like, this was like three actual homeworks. It wasn't just do this on the side. It was, it's time to make your portfolio better. Yep. The professor suggested to us that we all just don't delete it. Just leave it on GitHub, but just never look at it again, ever. And go to gatsby.org slash starters and grab a React-ish template and just make it better. Um, he said, put whatever you want in there, put some stuff on there, make sure you have something that looks cool. And then it's just, just better. And to you guys, you can't, you, maybe you can do something that's cool, but just, just take this. And I just thought it was kind of funny how everything we've worked on up until now, just stop using it. Go find a cool template. And, and while we were doing one of the exercises, he's like, hey, I own BrianBartholomew.com. And go, look what I just did in 15 minutes. I just took a template and I just put, yo, dog, hi, I'm Brian. And he just showed us how quickly we can deploy. 
and I just thought it was kind of cool because see I've had MatthewPetrol.com for a long time now and um, I've been a domain owner for years and years and years some of the other people in the class they're only I mean their portfolio is hosted on um, GitHub pages yeah and, that's fine too yeah it's it's I mean that's cooler than GeoCities it's I really do like GitHub pages uh, so I, uh, I I just went to uh, the website you mentioned, and I'll put that into the show notes because it's kind of funny. Um, so so I love the I use Gatsby personally for my own website, and uh, Gatsby is kind of the trendy thing right now in the React community for making a personal blog or uh, what do you call this thing portfolio? Just any static um, site or any yeah any static site or semi static site. Uh, Gatsby's great. This is pretty cool. What what I what I do have a concern with, and because I, you know, between the messaging of what you say, like the way you say something, and the the framing that you give a a, a topic or a subject, really is important. I think it's fine for you to go out anytime and just pick one of these starters and start making a Gatsby website. In fact, the way I made my initial website is I used the starter starter, and that was cool. That was fine. What I didn't do is I didn't take somebody's design. I made my own design. Uh, I made my own code. And in fact, uh, just just last weekend, I basically recoded the entire website again. Um, you know, iterative development and all that. So I, I would say it's totally fine and expected to do this. Uh, I just would say don't 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 use a template Spend and stick with, time it. with it. You have to actually change it meaningfully. Uh, make it your own uh, you know do something cool with it I've seen a lot of uh, portfolios and stuff but then when you look at some of these it just really gives you ideas of what you can do because there have yeah. been some amazing portfolios out there and you should do this this is a good idea plus you gotta see what the competition's doing yeah and there's there's a lot of pros of uh, wow this code is really weird yeah I, I agree. You should you should definitely do this. It's a it's a good idea. Except keeping the template as is. You should customize it. Yeah. And I will. But that is going to be after I do some other stuff. Like this is back burner like well within a month thing. Uh, well you should do it before June twenty sixth. Fifth, I thought yep, yep. Uh yeah. Oh snap. I should actually sign up for that. Yeah, you should do that too. Hacker X, everybody. Everybody's favorite and legendary um, recruiting event. <laughs> yes, it is. And it's just two weeks away. Yep. Three weeks. Three weeks. Mm-hmm. Tuesday, June 25th. To be determined in Minneapolis. Yeah, they just have to con somebody else into hosting it. And that's pretty much it. Uh, where can we find you on the internet? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on Twitter, Ryan Amar, and of course on my website, which will be updated very shortly at ryanrampersed.com. And I'm looking forward to seeing that. It'll look exactly the same, but if you read the source code, it'll be totally different. I see what you did there. Yeah, it is kind of interesting. It's uh, it's an internal optimization, I'll tell you that. How about you? Where can we find you on the internet? You can find me at matthewpetrol.com, and you can also find me on the people's page of the nexus.tv. That is excellent. And of course... You can find the Nexus itself all over the place, but especially on reddit.com where you can leave us commentary at reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV. And of course you can sponsor uh, some kind of episode at some kind of Patreon at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. Have a good one. Have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. convergence.